One of the most common uses I see for 3D printing on the shop floor is vice jaws. Whether simply to create standard soft jaws for a benchtop vise, or to create unique jaw shapes for specific applications. Let's walk through an example together to show you how you might approach this if you've never seen it done. We're going to be building jaws to hold this needle bearing housing in a CNC machine. The metal housing itself will either be printed on the metal X or cast in metal, which means we need this machining operation to bring it to its finished tolerances on the bearing surfaces. I already have a 3D model of the bearing, so there's several ways to go about modeling the jaws to match it, but what I found to be really helpful is to just start in the part model itself and then build two bodies that represent the jaw sizes and locations to plan it all out. Now if you extrude it right there, make sure to clear the merge result checkbox so there's separate bodies in that part. If you want the jaw parts to be separate parts so that you have them separate for document control and can give them a part number, just create a new part and insert the bearing part into that new part model. And then you can build them there. Either way, they'll be parametric and they'll update if the original part changes. If you want to have a copy of the part for reference after this is done, use the move copy body command first and then use the copied body to subtract the geometry so the original is still there for reference. Once I have my jaws located on the part, I'll either use the combine feature to subtract it or use the intersect tool to hit them both at the same time, removing all of the rest of the part geometry. This gives me a perfect imprint of the part on the jaws. I just need to trim away any areas that aren't needed or that might create an undercut. So for this design, the flange side has some holes, so the jaw on that side will have bosses that line up with the holes, and I'll be able to just drop the part in vertically. And then on the other side, we'll clear out any bosses so that it can slide in horizontally, making it easy to drop the housing in on the fixed side and then just slide the vise shut. A quick convert entities and extrude cut, or a delete and patch, works perfectly in situations like this to clean up the geometry. Now I need to slightly oversize this cavity to allow some assembly tolerance, and this is where I like to use the move face command. Just grab all the faces, select tangency works great in this example, and then right click, move face. The offset option will move all faces back. I'll use about five thousandths in this case. Just make sure it's going in the right direction before you click OK. Depending on the part, you might find that you need more or less clearance in certain areas. Just give it a try and then iterate it until you find a solid fit that isn't too tight or too loose. I'll add a few more details to this. We'll break the edges and add some text to identify the part number and then match up the holes with the vise. Now I would typically do this with a hole series in the assembly so that I don't even need to add dimensions to locate those holes but threads have always been a bit of an issue with printed parts. Printed threads tend to be a bit messy and weaker, especially for a part like this that'll get installed multiple times, that's just not gonna work. So I'm gonna use some heat set threaded inserts. I'll just match up the hole locations and then set the installation hole size and the taper based on the specifications from the manufacturer. Now I just need to save each of these jaw parts to an STL file and then we'll upload them to Iger to get them printed. I like to print these jaws in Onyx because it's more dimensionally stable and much stiffer while still being very tough and lightweight. This design is pretty blocky and beefy, so I think the default wall thickness and sparse fill settings are going to work just fine. Just keep in mind that if you're using inserts like this, you want to consider where the knurled faces are going to land and make sure there's enough material there. You'll get an estimate on the print time and cost before you kick it off, so if you do need to adjust the design a bit, you can. But this looks good to me. Let's lay these out and send them to the printer. Now that these parts are finished, we need to install the inserts. The process is pretty straightforward. Just make sure you get the recommended installation tip and soldering iron, and then let it get nice and hot. Line everything up and just apply a bit of downward pressure as it heats up until it goes all the way in. Make sure you don't push it too far in. It should not look recessed. That would push it past that solid surface layer where it needs to engage, and it would be more likely to pull out when you tighten the screws. 
Also, pay attention to the insert after it reaches the depth you want because it can try to float back up a bit. It might take a bit of practice, so if you've never done it before, build a couple of small sample blocks for practice, and that'll make sure your technique and the hole size is going to work out for these inserts. There will probably be a bit of material that melted out. Just cut that off with a blade or a chisel, and you're ready to install it on the vise and test it. Now, I hope you found this example useful. Making custom vise jaws certainly isn't something you need to do for every part you make. But for parts that have no square flat edges like this one, it's a great way to load it up securely and precisely for final machining. But also think about parts that you need to hammer on or grind on, something that you need to get a hold of. This is a fantastic way to make it possible to grab any shape and hold it securely while you work. Plus, these jaws are lightweight, they're inexpensive, they're really easy to store, they're fully documented in CAD and in Iger, and the markings are durable, so you can go find them again easily if you need to print another set. The printing process is super quick, and if they don't come out right or they get damaged, it's no big deal to run another one. If you want to see how we can help you solve a problem on your shop floor, visit our website at mlc-cad.com. Our experts are ready to help.